Hello, I'm Jonathan Dunsky, author of the Adam Lapide series, and today I'd like to tell you about a mystery novel that I read recently, and it's called Gone to Dust, and it's by an author by the name of Matt Goldman. I first became aware of this novel when I was looking at the Amazon book page of one of my novels, and I noticed that some of the people who've read my work have also read this novel. And I also noticed that the protagonist was a private detective called Neil Shapiro, and that the character was Jewish. And since I also write about a Jewish private detective, this got me interested in reading this book, and I finally picked up a copy and read it, and now I can tell you about it. So what is Gone to Dust? Where is it set? And what is the story about? Gone to Dust is a mystery that takes place in the city of Minneapolis and one of its suburbs. And it takes place during the winter months, which are quite brutal. As an Israeli reading the descriptions of all that snow and freezing temperature, it was quite something because I'm not used to that kind of weather. The protagonist is a private detective called, as I said, Neil Shapiro. And he is Jewish, but his Jewishness plays virtually no role in the plot or uh, in his life, I, I would even say. So he could easily have been uh, a detective of another uh, faith or ethnicity. The story begins when uh, a woman is discovered dead in her home. Someone has suffocated her. And she is covered entirely in the uh, sort of gray fluffy material that you find inside vacuum cleaners. And in fact, not only the body is covered with this gray dust sort of fluffy material, but her entire house, I mean, the interior of the house, all the surfaces, there's enough of that stuff there that it would have taken uh, hundreds of vacuum cleaner bags to fill that space. So the, and the, and the, the murder uh, has taken place in a suburb of Minneapolis called Edina. And this is an affluent suburb with big houses, big yards, rich people. And it's also a very peaceful place. So the local police department have very little experience uh, with violent crimes, let alone murder. And the bizarre nature of the murder scene and the local police feeling that they're, you know, this is over their heads, they decide to hire uh, an outside consultant to help them. And because one of the local police detectives is a friend of Neil Shapiro, he recommends that they should hire him. And Neil Shapiro is a private detective, and he has experience with more complex cases. In the book, it's, it's discussed that uh, he recently solved uh, a complex case in another part of the state or another part of the country. And while the the details of that case are not discussed, it's quite clear that he is someone who is able to take a more, uh, let's say, less straightforward case and, and, and solve it. So he begins by, uh, he begins his investigation by digging into the uh, victim's life and sort of peeling back the layers of her life in order to discover uh, who might have had motive to kill her because at first glance, there is no reason for anyone to have murdered this woman who's just uh, you know, a suburban divorcee with no, let's say, clear enemies in her life. But soon there are various suspects that uh, Neil Shapiro and the police are, you know, are looking into. There's the ex-husband, there's a former lover, there's the lover with whom the uh, murder victim had a relationship when she died, and he's a nasty sort of character with whom Neil Shapiro has uh, an unpleasant history. And there is also a woman with whom the, uh, the victim had frequent and recent uh, phone conversations with, and it's unclear exactly who this woman is or what role she played in the victim's life, because her family did not know of this woman's existence, but obviously she was someone important for the victim. So we get this sort of uh, bizarre beginning to the story, and we have a private detective who methodically tries to 
get to the get to the bottom of what happened there and why why this murder was committed and who committed it. And I just want to say a few words about Neil Shapiro himself. Uh, he's a very he's a very curious character in, in, as a fictional detective because he doesn't have any big hang-ups as most fictional detectives happen to have. He's not an alcoholic. He's not a drug addict. He doesn't suffer from PTSD or any sort of trauma related to his work. What he is is a is a good guy. Um, He's, but not in any way that you know makes him stand out like other fictional detectives do. He's actually quite ordinary. He's smart, but he's he's smart with not, without and he's and he's smart and he's witty and funny, but he is not a wisecracking detective like you may have encountered in other books. He's tough, but he's tough in not in an aggressive or violent way. It's just the way he is. He usually solves his problems. With his with his brain and not with his no not with his brute not with brute force or anything like that, and his in in his life he doesn't have any issue that's not common or even mundane, but he does have certain things in his life that uh, he wants to improve, and his life in general seems to be stuck in a in a sort of I wouldn't say terrible place, but in a bad place in terms of how he feels about it. For instance, he lives in an apartment which he basically hates. He even has a sort of a vulgar nickname for that apartment. But he doesn't seem to be able to bring bring himself to move out and find another place. He's recently divorced, uh, but he, he still has contact with his wife and they get together every now and then and they sort of have still have a physical relationship with each other so he's not able and he's still in love with her and he's not able to break away from her sufficiently in order to allow himself to move on with his life and perhaps find a healthier relationship so he has problems that many many people who maybe will read the book will be able to uh recognize and sympathize with because they are so ordinary and in fact the entire book has a more in a way realistic and ordinary feel to it than many other detective novels and as I was reading it I, 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 I was thinking to myself why is this book interesting why am I reading it so quickly and why am I eager to get back to it when after I have to put it down and go do something else and I realized that the the ordinary nature of the book was in a way refreshing and I was just you know I was I was just learning to like this guy as I would a friend not as a character who is sort of different and distant from me but as someone I could you know just hang out with I will also say that there is humor in the book the author used to write scripts for sitcoms and it shows because the the Neil Shapiro is very witty and funny and uh, it's something that serves to lighten up the book and, and bring something extra into it. So I think overall uh, that this is a pretty good mystery. I did not see the end coming. I did not guess who the culprit is. And I read a lot of mysteries and also write a few. So this is something that is worth mentioning. And of course, it's a good, it's a good sign in any mystery. Uh, and I enjoyed reading it. And, I, and I, if you're looking for sort of straightforward mystery without much violence without any you know over the top elements this is a good this is a good choice and you can find links in the description below to where you can pick yourself a copy um, and I think that if you live in Minneapolis I think you'll enjoy the book even more because it, it's clear that the author loves that city and he, he, he portrays that city quite in quite detail and I wasn't able to follow it all the way through because I, I, I'm not familiar with Minneapolis at all but if you've ever lived there or in, and if you're familiar with the city I think you'll get something even more out of this book so in general I enjoyed it uh, and if you're if, if you're interested in uh, in sort of you know uh, if you're interested in mysteries at all I think you should give this a try <laughs>